I got some big news for you today. So earlier in the year, we reported that uh, Uber was allowing drivers in just a few markets around airports to set the price uh, with the new feature. Well, that has expanded to several other markets. And in this video, I'm gonna go into some detail about the feature and also where this is expanded to. And stick around, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you whether I think this is a good thing for drivers or a not so good thing for drivers. Well, hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with da -da -da, the Rideshare Guy coming to you early uh, Tuesday morning with my Nespresso. Let's see, it's about 8.15. And uh, so, a little bit of background. In California, we've got this law called AB5. And basically, if you adhere to the law, then all Uber uh, drivers and Lyft drivers would be considered employees. And that would be a huge expense for Uber and Lyft. So they're not a big fan of AB5. So what's going on is they are bringing out features which will bolster their case that uh, drivers are actually independent contractors. And as you look at this screenshot, uh, one new feature that we're seeing here in California is that we can see the destination and the expected commission right at the ping, all right? So it didn't always used to be that way. You know, it used to be um, you'd, you'd get the ping, you'd drive however far you drove to make the pickup, you'd wait for the passenger to get in the car, then you'd start the ride, and then you'd see where you were going, right? And even then, you still didn't see how much money you're gonna make until you got to the end of the ride, and uh, that's how that went. So there's been a lot of changes. But this change is uh, to address the issue of pricing. So a true independent contractor, say like a plumber, can fix their own rate, right? Let's say I'm a superior plumber. I can charge 50% more than other plumbers. I'm free to do that, right? I'm an independent contractor, independent. I don't have any other outside forces impacting me. So this is Uber's attempt to give drivers the flexibility to set their own prices. I'll let you be the judge of whether they meet that threshold or not, but let's jump in to this new feature. Okay, number one is timing, all right? So what's the timing of this thing? You're probably wondering, uh, is this coming to my market? Well, it's, in, it's gonna be in California. And here's what Uber uh, shared with us. They say, starting July 6th, which was yesterday, we're providing drivers in LA and the surrounding areas the option to set their own fares for trips as a multiple of time and distance rates. This feature is designed to further increase driver's flexibility and protect access to independent work. In the coming weeks, all California drivers will be able to set their own fare. We will monitor feedback regarding how well the new feature is working. We'll use this information to continue making product improvements in the months ahead so that we can build on our commitment to flexibility and protect the independence of drivers like you. And that was an Uber spokesperson. So the bottom line is within two weeks, it's gonna be in all of California. Okay, number two, auto pricing. So this is where the feature is listed in driver driving preferences in your app. And what you see here is a screenshot of uh, that. And you can see the red circle around auto pricing. So if you leave auto pricing on, then everything's gonna be just like normal, okay? But if you turn auto pricing off, then you have some flexibility to impact uh, the rate. Okay, number three, the fare multiplier, all right? So what you're seeing here is the screenshot for the fare multiplier. And as you can see, it shows a, a minus sign and a plus sign, and it's at 1.x. So if you leave it at 1.x, nothing's going to change, okay? The rate's going to be the normal default rate, okay? So let's say I'm in, we'll just say San Francisco, I'm in downtown, and um, I get an airport run, and I have my, my uh, setting at one, it's going to be the normal rate that that client, uh, that passenger would pay. But I can set that multiplier down to 0.5, which means, let's say it's a $20 trip, um, normally, um, if I set it down to half or 0.5, then that passenger would only pay $10. Okay, so I'm basically cutting my commission in half and cutting the, the fare in half. Or I can go all the way up to 5x, 
So a 5X would be a $100 ride, right? And now you're thinking, well, why would, why would a, a passenger pay five times the amount? And the answer is they probably wouldn't, right? So what happens is the, the passenger will see that the rate is higher than normal, even if it's just 1.1, uh, they're gonna see that it's higher than normal and they're gonna have the option to accept or decline. So if that passenger sees the 5X, you know, it's a $100 fare, they're probably going to decline and then they're gonna wait for the next option, okay? So that's how it works. So during my um, interview yesterday with Uber, I asked this question, I said, if two cars are the same distance or the same ETA to go pick up a passenger and one has a 1X normal and one has a 2X, who's gonna get the ping? And they said, well, the, the, lower, the lower one is going to get the ping. Then I said, what if, right, what if the 1X is, uh, you know, a mile away and the 2X is half a mile away? Who's going to get the ping? Because the 2X is closer in terms of ETA, but the 1X is a cheaper price. And they said, it's all based on the algorithm. So I'm like, oh. So we don't really know the relationship between how far you are and how much higher you can charge and still get, get the ping, right? And then you've also got to consider that the passenger may say, 2X, I'm not going to pay double, I'm going to decline. So there's a lot we don't know. So my recommendation is you're going to have to play around with it. And as I'll share a little bit later, I did talk to a driver in Bakersfield and I'll share his experience. Um, and how he's uh, working with, within this new system uh, to get an increase in his pay. Number four is opting into surge fares. Okay, this is yet another feature. So if you look at the screenshot, you'll see exactly what it is. It says surge fares, get higher fares if surge pricing is higher than your fare multiplier. So what that means is if you hit that switch, and let's say you're, you're tooling around and you're at 1.5, okay? Let's say you're trying to get a 50% higher uh, rate, okay? But then the, the, the demand for drivers goes up to two. Well, if you, had, if you had that toggle switch to on, your ride is automatically gonna be at the, at the higher level, okay? So that just seems like a no-brainer, right? If uh, people are getting you know, that higher rate, um, then you'd wanna get that higher rate. Or, or you may think, gosh, if everyone's at two and I'm at 1.5, that means I'm more likely to get a ride because my price is lower, right? So here, here's what I found out. Uh, our, our friend uh, driver named Gary, who works down in Bakersfield, so thumbs up to Gary, thanks for the information. He's been using it for about two weeks. And his strategy is to set the multiplier at 0.2, so 1.2. So basically he's trying to give himself a 20% uh, increase in pay. And it's working so far, so far it's working because there are a lot of drivers that are trying to get 2X and 3X. So he's talked to some passengers and they said, yeah, a lot of drivers are really trying to get a lot more. So his 0.2 is a bargain. So when, when passengers see 0.2, they're like, eh, it's hardly, hardly anything. So they just accept it. And he said out of, out of 80 or so, he's only had two that declined and all the rest uh, were accepted. So driver friend Gary is seeing a 20% increase in his pay over two weeks. Now, so number five, what does this mean for drivers? Well, we don't know, right? It's a very uh, weird time. You know, driving has been unusual because of the pandemic and we don't really know <laughs> how the algorithm works. So it's gonna be a little of trial and error. And the market's going to, the market being all of us drivers are going to be this like experiment. But here's what I think is gonna happen. And this is why I'm not a big fan because what we're seeing with uh, our friend Gary in Bakersfield is he's getting, he's getting his rides at 1.2. Other drivers are at two and three and they're not getting as many rides. So they're smart, they're saying, oh, I need to lower my rate. And if I lower it to 
one, I'll get rides ahead of Gary. And then everyone's going to be at one. And then what if there's a glut of, of drivers, which is very realistic. A lot of people are out of work. A lot of people are going to be getting back, you know, getting back to driving because that's the one thing that people can do if they've lost their job. It's easy to get in, you get a car, you know, low barrier to entry. And they say, well, shoot, I, I need to get more rides. I'm going to go to point nine or I'm going to go to point eight. And then all of a sudden we're making less money, right, in order to get rides because we want to get rides because we want to make money. So that's my theory. So I'm not a big fan. But for the time being, if you're Gary in Bakersfield, <laughs> this is great, right? It's working. Uh, so it's the kind of thing you're going to have to kind of uh, figure it out and it's going to change because drivers are going to react to uh, pretty quickly when they're not getting a ride. They're going to say, hmm, what do I need to do? And the default move is going to be lower your prices uh, because that's going to drive up the demand uh, for your particular service, right, in competition with everybody else. So now we're all competing not just on how close we are to the pickup, but also on the pricing that we're offering our services at. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, you got to give it to Uber. They're trying, okay? They're they're basically taking a, a round peg and trying to put it into a square, a square hole, or they're taking a square peg and putting it through a round hole, right? They're trying to make us into independent contractors the best that they can while still controlling virtually everything about um, what we do. So uh, good, good, on, good on Uber. So it's an opportunity for drivers to play around with some new rules and uh, see if you can work the system so you can make a little bit extra money. Um, we'll see. We'll, have to, we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. Um, I think in a month we'll have a much better fix on this, right? Because then this, uh, these new features will have been in market for a couple of weeks. We'll start to get some feedback from other drivers and uh, and see how you guys like it. All right. Those of you who are, uh, <laughs> who are brave enough to go out and drive as the pandemic in California is raging, especially in Southern California. All right. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. This is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Just click on that little thumbs up. That'll help a lot more people see it. Um, this has been a video about this update of uh, Uber offering a new feature which allows you to impact the price that your driver is going to pay and therefore impacting your commissions. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our channel. We put out five, count them, five videos every single week and uh, we'll just keep you up to date, okay? Just keep you up to date, keep you in, in the know, in the know, all right? And be sure and sign up for notifications, set your notifications for on so that you know when next time we do a YouTube Live. You all have a great day. Be safe out there, and uh, see you next time.